This is a complete Blackmagic camera app tutorial for beginners. We're gonna cover everything you need to know to level up your iPhone filming. Plus you'll see why we think this is the best camera app for iPhone in 2024. So this is what you'll see when you first open up the app. You can see up in the top left-hand corner, we can see what lens we're using. We can see our frames per second, our shutter speed. We've also got our time code, our ISO, white balance, tint, and we can quickly and easily see our recording format here as well. Now, while these are great visual indicators, a lot of these you can actually tap on and you can change directly from this as well. So you don't need to dive into menus to change your lens, to change your frames per second or shutter speed. Likewise, with some of these other settings here as well, you can just tap on them here and set them directly from this menu. Down the bottom here, we've got our audio bars where we can monitor our audio. If you tap on this, we're able to get a much larger version of it. And we can also control our volume and things from here too. Next one across here is our storage. So we can see how much space we have left on our device, but we also see the amount of record time we've got left as well. And then down the bottom here is where we get a preview of some of our scopes. Now over on the side here is where we can dial things in even more. So this first one up here will let us customize up our viewport. So we can turn on things like our zebra lines to help us gauge our exposure. We've also got our focus peaking here as well so we can easily see what's in focus. We've also got grids and guides that we can turn on here as well. So there's your rule of thirds. And with the guides, we can choose different frames that we can overlay here on our videos to help us with the framing of our shot. So I love that there's not only like traditional guides here, but there's also portrait ones as well. So if you're someone who's gonna be shooting for both landscape and portrait content, then you can make sure you're nailing your framing here in a portrait environment as well. So anything to do with the visual stuff, then that's all in here. And we've even got the ability to preview our shot here with a LUT applied from this section too. The next one down here, this is our focus control. So we can either manually adjust our focus here using this slider, or we've got auto focus up here as well, or we can just tap on the screen wherever we want to focus. This next one's an obvious one. This is our record button to start and stop recording. We've also got the ability down below that here to turn on or off video stabilization. So the default setting here is standard, but we've got cinematic as well, which will take out more shake and extreme, which is the highest level of video stabilization, or we have the ability to turn it off. Below that, we can control our camera zoom here, either by selecting one of these default or preset settings here, or we can actually use the slider here to zoom in and out. And then the one on the bottom here, this is our built-in slate. I think it's awesome that this is built in. If you wanna log your clips as you go, wanna take note of everything, then it's cool that we don't need to go and have a separate app to be able to take note of all of this stuff. And then the last menu over on the side here, this is where we can switch between the camera, which is obviously what we're on right now. We can view our media or any clips that we've created. We can access chat if we're integrating with say remote team or people that are collaborating with us on our black magic projects here. And then below that is where we can access our app settings. So this is the first place I'd recommend that you are visiting when you're first getting set up. Let's make sure that all your settings are the way that you want them before we start creating. So there is a lot in this section. So I'd recommend that you're tapping through here at some point just to see first off what you've got access to because there is a lot in here. And you might find that a lot of it might not apply to what you're doing, but it's good to know what you've got access to in here so that as you grow and as you learn more with this, that you can implement and use some of these more advanced features in here too. But what you wanna start off with is this first one at the top here, record. This is where you will wanna lock down your recording codec. So you can see the default here for me is HEVC, so H265, but you do also have the ability to pick H264. So if you're looking for something that probably has greater compatibility with different computers, especially older ones, then you might wanna set this here to H264, but you've also got your ProRes codecs in here as well for those of you looking for the highest quality or even a proxy workflow. But say for most people, you're gonna be using one of these two. I'm gonna leave this as default. Next is your resolution. You can see we're currently set to 4K, but you have the options here to drop it to 1080p, which is HD, or 720p here as well. Next, we can choose our color space. Again, the default here is probably where a lot of people are going to leave this, Rec 709. But you do have the ability here to set this to Apple Log HDR and also a Rec 2020 HDR as well. Now you can see here, there's also a time-lapse recording mode as well, which you can enable or disable, and you can customize up here how many frames 
frames that's going to capture. But this last feature down here, I love that we've got control over this. So if your phone is struggling and is dropping frames, you get to choose what happens here. So the default is to get an alert on screen, but you could also set it to stop recording at that point. So it's good that you've got the choice here, but I'm gonna leave it here as just alert me, just let me know. So those are your main recording settings you wanna lock down. Let's jump across to camera. Now you will need to enable this setting here if you are going to be recording vertical videos with this app. By default, this is set to record landscape only, but if you wanna be able to tilt your phone from portrait to landscape, same as you would the built-in camera app in your phone, then you can enable that here. Personally, I'll leave this one enabled. Use the volume button to trigger record. I think it's handy that you can use a physical button on your phone for this. I also like that you can turn this setting on or off, lock your white balance when you're recording. Again, this is another one that I leave on. It's also cool in here with our shutter measurement, we can choose if we wanna see shutter speed or shutter angle. So this is something that a lot of the other camera apps don't give you the ability to adjust your shutter with an angle measurement or an, an angle amount versus just the shutter speed. You will wanna make sure that you've got this setting here set for you and for your region. So for me, it knows that I'm in Australia. So it set the flicker free frequency here to 50 Hertz. So that's already set there for me. But say if you're in the States or Canada, you wanna set this here to 60 Hertz to help you remove any flickering from lights and things in your scene. And scrolling down here, you can see at the bottom, uh, if you are gonna be recording using your front facing camera on your device, then you can set here whether you want that to be mirrored or not so that you don't have any text, say that's backwards. Next one over here is audio. This is where we get to pick our audio source. So the default here, if you've got nothing connected, like I am now, is just the iPhone microphone. But obviously the moment you plug in an external microphone, you can select that in here too. But we also have the ability in here to adjust our audio recording format. You can see the default here is AAC, but you can see you can also customize this up here too. Likewise with recording stereo or mono and adjusting your sample rate. Again, for probably most people, you better leave this here as default. This next one down here, monitor, is how we can customize up our interface and the display and everything that we're seeing here in greater detail as well. So we can customize up what we're seeing for the focus assist. We can change the color of it. We can customize up the guides, like the rule of thirds guides and things that we can bring up on screen. We can customize those up too. And if we're gonna be connecting our device to an external monitor or a TV or something, then we can customize up what our HDMI output is actually pushing through, whether it's just mirroring what it is on your device screen or whether we're just sending the video feed through. So it's pretty cool to have this built in as well. And then if you wanna customize up that main interface even further, we can actually turn off the audio meters, the histogram, all of that stuff here, we can turn on or off from this. So I'm probably gonna turn this one here on, battery indicator. So when we go back, then we're now seeing that up here as well. Again, I love that you can customize this up to how you wanna work. Now, for those of you that do wanna work with LUTs and preview what your shots will look like with different lookup tables applied or different grades and effects and things applied, then this is where we can set all of that up. So if we come down here to LUT selection, then there's already our built-in one here, our Apple Log LUT, but we can also import a LUT in here as well. So if you've got a specific look that you wanna have in here to apply, to preview, or even to record and bake into your final recording, then you can import that here. Because if we go back, we've also got the option here to record LUT to our clip. So the finished video that we're recording can actually already have that LUT applied if that's something that we're into. Now down here under presets, this is where we can create different presets for maybe different shooting scenarios. So we can come in here, we can create a new preset based on the settings that we've applied here. And maybe we call this JB 4K because our settings here were for 4K recording. And then maybe we could have one set up for 1080p or a different shooting style. Then we can come in here and we can choose between our different presets so that we're able to switch between these really fast. So let's go back to our main camera interface now. We can just press camera up the top here or we can select settings again to get out of settings. And then we can start locking down our shot here. So the first place I'd start here is which lens do you wanna use? So we can either use the zoom here to zoom in and out, or we can actually specify which camera lens we wanna use. So you can see here we can switch between the wide angle lens, we've got our default, the 24 mil. Now because I'm on an iPhone 15 Pro Max, it's giving me the option here for a five time zoom, which is this one, or we can switch to the front. Hey. Let's go back to the default, the one times. Next, we can adjust our frames per second. 
So you can see we can go as low as 23.98. We also have a 24, 25, all the way up to 60. So we can shoot 4K 60 right now. now I'm gonna set this back to 25 because I'm in Australia, a PAL region where 25 is a standard frame rate for us. But if we're talking popular global frame rates, 24 frames per second will be for those of you that like that sort of cinematic look, or you've got your 30 frames per second setting here as well, which is usually the default iPhone camera setting. Now, based on what you pick here, your shutter speed is going to be automatically set correctly for you. So you can see that it's doubled our frame rate here for us. So 30 frames per second, we've got one over 60. If I drop it back to where I actually want it, 25 frames per second, you can see that our shutter speed now is one over 50. And again, setting it correctly like this will help you remove any flickering from lights and things in your scenes. But this isn't actually locked in at this point. If we just tap on the screen here, you can see that it's automatically made an adjustment or a change here for us. If we wanna lock this in, then we can tap on this, we can set it to where we want it, but then you wanna make sure that you're hitting the padlock up the top here so that your shutter speed is locked in. You can see now we are locked in at one over 50, meaning that wherever I tap on here to adjust focus or exposure is not changing our shutter speed. So it is a good idea to lock your settings down here whenever you can so that you know things aren't changing while you're shooting. Now from here, we can brighten or darken our shot here using our ISO setting. So the lower the number, the darker the shot. The higher the number, the brighter the shot's going to be. But be mindful that if you go too high with this, this is where you start to bring in digital noise and graininess into your footage. So we can either use this slider here to adjust or there are default settings or presets along the side here for common used ones. So 100, 200, 400, 800. And you can see the higher we go, the brighter the shot. I'm just gonna leave this on 100. And the next one across here is your white balance. So if we press on this, again, we're currently set to auto. We can see that we're on auto because it's got the little A up here. To kick it into manual mode, we want to hit this little auto button here. And now we can manually adjust this. So you can see that we can make the shot warmer or add more yellow or orange. We can go the other way and make it more blue or cooler. So we can manually dial this in. Or again, there are presets here for different lighting conditions. So daylight, incandescent light, fluoro light, so cloudy day. And the next one across here, tint. This works very much the same way. Again, we've got an auto adjustment here if we want it. Or we can adjust really the level of pink and green in our our shot with our tint slider here. So now that we've adjusted our shot exposure and all of our recording settings here, next you wanna make sure that the subject of your video is in focus. So there is a tap to focus here, or we can jump across to the manual focus like I showed you earlier using the slider here as well. And there's also an auto setting for focus too. Meaning that if something comes into shot, it's going to automatically adjust for that and then go back into focus afterwards. So that's gonna come down to the type of videos you're making, whether you want to use autofocus or not. If it's something that's not gonna be moving, then I'd suggest you're kicking it into manual focus. And we can do that just by tapping on the thing that you want to be in focus. That'll set the focus at that point. And if we're in manual focus mode, it will hold it at that point for us. So if you don't wanna mess around with manual settings and things in here, you can just tap and hold on screen on the thing that you wanna focus on and set the brightness and exposure and everything for. And you can see now we've got AE, AF lock. So we've locked our autofocus at this point and we've locked our auto exposure at this point too. Now the last thing to check before you press record is your audio here. You can see that we do have audio bars working, which means like we can see that the audio is coming through. We can tap on this, we can make minor adjustments. If we're using an external microphone, we can adjust the volume level on this. If we're just on the standard built-in microphone, then right now this is an automatic adjustment. But once that's good to go, then you just wanna hit this button here to start recording. We can see then we've got the time code that's counting up at the top here to show us that we are recording. When we wanna stop recording, we can press the same button here to stop. And then we can access our video files that we've recorded over here on that media area. Now by default, these clips here are saved into the app itself. So you won't see them in your photos area. But if we tap on a clip in here, then we can play it back. We can also hit the share button here and we can save it then to our photos by choosing save video, or we've got all of our regular share options in here as well. And if you are working with the Blackmagic Cloud and you're backing up your clips, then you have access here to log in and connect that through and have them automatically upload or manually upload for the clips that you're approving. Now that you're up to speed with the Blackmagic Camera app, if you wanna level up your overall filming process, check out the video linked on screen. We've also got a link on screen to our free PDF download, the complete guide to filming on an iPhone. So grab your free copy of that. There's also links and resources down in the description box below to help you even further. And I will see you in the next video.